You can make a wind chime out of anything. You can make it out of old metal pieces or parts or glass or tile or anything that makes a clinkety clankety sound. There are things that you can't make wind chimes with. That would include feathers, um, photographs, apples, oranges, various other fruits, pillows, sandwiches, cats, dogs. <laughs> Fabric socks, yeah, socks make terrible wind chimes, so there's that. Um, what else makes a terrible wind chime? Hair. <laughs> <laughs> So now that you know some things that make terrible wind chimes, let me tell you what makes great wind chimes. Fired pieces of clay. Find somebody in your community who has a kiln who will let you fire it. You know, you make a new friend. It's just fun. This clay is a fun thing to work with because it's just dirt. So we're gonna cut some clay to get us started here. I wanna make some discs. So I'm just gonna roll some clay out. Check this out. This is a, a clay table that I made. It's just a piece of plywood that has canvas over the top. And the canvas that I have spread out keeps the clay from sticking. So if you try to work with clay, it's a good idea to make yourself one of these or every time you go to peel your clay up, it will be stuck. I'm gonna use this, this little rolling pin. I'm gonna roll it out to be maybe, let's say eight-ish of an inch thick. And then I'm gonna use this cutter to cut circles and try to make some discs. That's probably a little bit thick. This is gonna be too thick. I'd say right now it's about a quarter of an inch. It's no good. The sound's gonna be flat. When you clank two thick pots together, they don't make a very pretty noise because it's so thick. But if you clink something thin, ah, yes. That's probably an eighth, an eighth of an inch thick, something like that. That's gonna be great. So I'm gonna cut a few of these. So if you have anything that's a circle or a disc, if you try to wrap it to make it more conic, it doesn't work. You have to relieve a piece of the material like this. Now, I can take my circle and I can fold it together like this to make a cone shape. I also need to create a space for the shoelace to come up through. So I'm gonna use my clay tool to make a hole. Now here's something else about clay that you might not know. It shrinks when you fire it. So this hole and this disc is actually gonna get about 10% smaller once all the moisture is eradicated and it turns to a ceramic. The next thing that has to happen with clay is I have to let it dry. I'm gonna set this stuff out in the open air to let it harden. Then I can put it in my kiln to let it dry. So I'll bake it to 2100 degrees first, which is really hot. Then I take it out and I'm gonna put a glaze on it to give it some color. Sounds pretty good. back in there again to make it really, really ultra hard. While everything was baking, I just needed to cut up a hanging block to attach everything to. I'm really digging this blue. That's really pretty. This one has got some brown and some white, which is pretty cool. Kind of looks like a 1970s coffee mug. This is just the natural clay with no glaze or anything on it. All you gotta do is take some of your leather lace and we're gonna tie a knot at the bottom. String these puppies up in reverse. It's like, it's like a country farm in here. I need some chickens. Just come on in, have a glass of lemonade. Oh, mind the wind chime. Welcome to Brooklyn. That's for the tie. I want these to be close enough to clink, but 
far enough away to get some swing, so. How satisfying is that? This is probably one of my favorite things that I've made so far. I love this. It's really giving me that zen vibe. So let me know what you think. If it's your favorite, let me know. If you like it, if you don't like it, let me know. Get out there, make a wind chime, feel the breeze. This makes me so happy, you have no idea.